1159 at Radio Free America, and this is Uncle Sam with music and the truth until dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. Welcome, everybody, to our Daily Gun Show. We come to you live every day at noon Eastern. That's 9 a.m. Pacific. 9 a.m. Pacific for about an hour each day. Uh, we do three gun-related topics each day, different topics throughout the week. Uh, we run it live on YouTube and simulcast it over at gunchannels.com, where we're watching the live comments from the people that are watching us live. Um, we'll uh, take the audio from some of the best shows and post them over on iTunes as a podcast. So we appreciate everybody that listens to the show, listens to the show now or in the future especially those that take the time to leave us some feedback over there on whatever platform it is you might be listening to it on. Uh, subscribes to our channel, leaves comments. Um, all those things let us know you're out there, and they also let our show get recommended to more listeners. So we do appreciate that. It is one of our goals. We've got hosts. We've got Bob jumping in from Canada. Thanks for joining. Hey, glad to be here. And then we got Jimmy running the show up in Phoenix. Hey, thanks. Good to be here. So... I'm down here in Tucson. Where did this go? We are on episode. Hey, glad to be here. And then we got Jimmy. Okay, Bob. Uh, then we got uh, we're on episode 453. It's Wednesday, so we'll be talking about entertainment, good idea, bad idea, and our hashtag Daily Gun Show showdown, where we're going to judge all the pictures that came up on Instagram this week. Uh, before we start the show, though, we usually take a break at the beginning, see if anything happened overnight. So there's a couple of things that we can talk about. Um, Mac had a show last night to let everybody know about it. And we've been posting stuff on YouTube and hopefully all over. Um, but today the sent the House is um, going to be voting at, uh, on the HR 38 as well as HR 4434. Um, one of those is good. HR 38 for the most part is good. It's the national, recipro national carry reciprocity, which would force the states to recognize each other's permits. Uh, for concealed carry, uh, which isn't, I've said it before, I'm not 100% behind it, but it is a positive one. And if we need to champion something to move the ball the other way, this is a, a step in that direction. So it's definitely worth contacting representatives and letting them know that you're for HR 38. And then there's HR 4434, which is uh, called, called? Fix Nix. So it's supposedly going to go in there and be sensible gun control to uh, add to the NICS background check system to fix it. Well, of course, it doesn't need fixing. It needs removing. So everyone is against 4434. And that's also being voted on today. I don't know if it's too late at noon Eastern or not, but uh, put us on pause if you want. It's not that many people listening anyway. And that could be 14 more phone calls going over there. Or um, well, I guess more like seven. Well, we don't have very many listeners anymore. So we do appreciate the seven people that come on and listen to us. I don't know how bad we're getting that we only have seven visitors, seven viewers. But um, that's the first thing. Do you guys have anything from overnight? Um, no, I just want to add, I don't know if you said, but the, it is going in the committee today. So, yeah, it, make sure you guys get on that. Uh, and uh, Gun Owners of America, as well as Firearms Policy, both have forms you can just click a button and click on them i made a video this morning with links to those otherwise you can just find them they're both linked on their main pages and uh, you can just fill out the form fill in your name and everything send it both your congressmen and your senators that way the senators know your opinion right away uh, so that if they start getting chatted up or down about the, the bills then they'll know where you stand and then of course your reps are more immediately involved so um, I do have something on a more serious note that we need to address today. And uh, unfortunately, you hear a lot about the, these deviants in the media that are doing all the sexual abuse and whatnot. And unfortunately, the Daily Gun Show has not been untouched by that. So it's difficult to talk about, but we need to bring it up. And uh, there are going to be some changes in the show. But it turns out that if I'm finally willing to talk about it, 
but for years now, my dog has been inappropriately licking himself in front of people. So we're going to ask him to step down from the show, and uh, we'll hopefully be able to leave it at that. But we we like to think that we're going to move forward with a a better show for everyone, and we can only apologize for what's happened in the past. We hope more lives weren't affected by this. All right, well, if we can gather our stuff back together, we'll dig into episode 453, the entertainment segment. Uh, gun shows in movies. Have there even been gun shows in movies before? Uh, yeah, I remember at least one. <laughs> Which one? Um, 100 miles or 300 miles or something like that. Oh, snap. Yeah, the one I got paid twice to be in. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about that one. I, I was I just think... thinking about it because I've been going to a lot of gun shows lately, and I was hoping that somebody would remember some gun shows in movies. There, there, I know there's been some in real movies, though, like big movies. There must have been, yeah. I just can't think of one off the top of my head. Well, this is a stimulating <laughs> topic, I guess. Roaring silence. <laughs> Can you just type it into Google? Will that work? Maybe. Or that IMVM or whatever, that movie thing? There's no I am, wait. I am GSDB. I had to step away for a second. What are we what are we looking for? Are there any movies out there or TV shows, I guess, with gun shows in them? Oh. Yeah, I was trying to think of one earlier when you when you just asked, but I I can't think of any. There has to be some. I mean, lots of documentaries. That's what Angry's saying out there, which is true. Yeah. Oh, Pink is saying Anchorman? Anchorman. I think that was in relation to it. Mm -hmm. But I just don't remember that part of Anchorman. It's a comedy. Yeah, I'm trying. I remember Anchorman. I don't remember them walking I think through. I'm talking the about when he holds up his arms and says, You're going to the gun show. Oh, <laughs> he's being a comedian. I'm sitting here going, I don't remember a gun show in that movie. I feel like I just got got. Mm -hmm. Oh, Angry brings up uh, Lord of War and an arms show. That That's true. Happen. And then if you're going to bring up international arms shows, which are like trade shows for the big stuff, then you got to come up with uh, sales of the century, sale of the century, the deal of the century, the sale of the century, right? Chubby Chase. Bunch of other people back in the olden days, back in the eighties. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was about him being an arms dealer. So then they're saying thirteen hours and Black Hawk Down both had arms markets. I think if you'd bring in international gun shows like bazaars, then you might find some more because there are occasionally movies where they have to go source a gun at a weird, crazy. You know, foreign bizarre type of thing. Well, they're bringing up them movies. Then that what's that new one? War Dogs or Dogs of War or something? Where where uh that guy? They're out. Yeah, the guy with mm -hmm. the thing. Kinda. I mean, that's more like War Lord of War, like exploiting uh, communist warehouses. But I don't remember a gun show in it. There might be though, because that show is trying to be anti-gun in all different kind of ways what about uh oh, yeah. wild geese that was uh they were mercenaries going over to take over some african country but i was pretty sure they were buying their guns at some gun show in england really i think so been a long time since i saw that movie though if you come <laughs> up with uh guys who are selling guns out of their like weird bar or like restaurant or some surplus store even then you get things like falling down in the Rambo and 
Terminator. Terminator. There's a gun shop in Terminator, but I'm yeah. thinking like uh, behind the scenes, back room type of stuff. We're talking gun show, really. So I don't know. It's kind of already getting. If we get to gun shop, that's going off topic pretty bad. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's. I mean, there's a few Midnight all right, but Midnight Saint, Boondock Saints, you know, like going to that guy's room. Yeah. Uh, and Pete, in falling down, he goes into a, a surplus store, and then the guy takes him into the back room, right? Unless he goes into a gun shop also. That's what I remember, because I went into that surplus store. I've been in there before. I don't remember no gun show And that. That's true. Patriot's saying there's a whole bunch of movies where the people are buying them out of people's trunks, or like that one famous movie everybody loves so much where the guy taxi driver where the guy brings the guns up in a suitcase right and he looks through a bunch of different kind of guns oh yeah yeah that was kind of neat and then uh what's that movie with uh jodie foster i think where she goes to try to buy a gun at a uh, new york store and they laugh at her and then she goes outside and the guy's like here i'll just sell you the gun in the alley he buys a top she buys a thousand dollar car Since we're talking about movies like that, that one that uh, Dano brought up a while back, it was uh, Death Sentence with Bacon. Kevin Bacon was in it, and he like does something kind of similar to that. Like John Goodman has a whole gun set up like that. Hmm. Well, that's a challenge. Then we'll keep moving along with the show. And then, oh, uh, Angry Sin, I think there's a gun show in an episode of CSI. Hmm. That would almost be worth watching CSIs again. You mean the real CSI, the old real CSI? I didn't I didn't mind that show. I might watch some of those episodes again to see if I can find a gun show. Was there ever a gun show in MacGyver? Seems like he hates guns enough to go into a gun show and talk shit about it. I don't remember that. No, I don't think so. Me either. All right. Well, again, that's your homework. You listen to this show. You join us then. You've got to uh, do some homework once in a while. All right, so uh, we'll move along, I guess, and uh, start talking about the good idea, bad idea, whether or not staging staging firearms around the house is the way to go. But before we do, we take a break between the first and second segment of the show each day to feature one of the members over at Gun Channels. And, you know, Gun Channels is a place we built a while back. It's focused on firearms, and it's completely driven by its members. And with that in mind, we feature a member every day. And today it's going to be both one of our Patreons and one of the members over at Gun Channels. And that is uh, Never Enough Ammo. So that'll show up over here. Matt does a chat on Mondays where he talks about nerd stuff with geeks. And then on Wednesday, he complains about politics with gun people. And then he talks about what guns to buy and things like that. And uh, pretty much started doing this stuff back in the earliest of days when they first started bringing the the ability over to the YouTubes and he was one of the inspirations for the Every Second Matters projects and the, a bunch of the different things that we've been working on and uh, when we built on channels he was one of the first to start posting his shows over there and obviously a lot of people are familiar with him and uh, he's about to move right so he's gonna take his show to a different place and it'll change a bit I'm sure and uh, it's always interesting to see how Matt develops and evolves started off with just a young kid on the streets of Texas with a laptop and a microphone now he's moving his way up to, to tough falls <laughs> yeah Matt's big time he's a good guy though for you know a Texan yeah He's all right. <laughs> all right, so that'll take us into good idea, bad idea, staging firearms around the house. Bob? Uh, come on. Bad idea. Jimmy? Glorious idea, but I have a caveat. Well, of course it's a good idea. I don't know what Bob's thinking. Probably because it's not legal for him. All right, so do we go with Bob with the wrong answer, make him defend himself, or Jimmy with his caveat? I'll go first. Um, I would say my caveat is just because I have I live in a house with a bunch of people, so I don't scatter it throughout the house. Especially there's like kids around here, and they don't get 
whilst 100% of the time. So the, I butt stage them around my room and the area that I'm in, like little loft area in my room, yes, all day. But if you live with a bunch of people, it may not be a great idea. They would have, you know, you'd have to judge your own situation. But other than that, I think it's a great idea. Um, somebody kicks in your door and you're not able to get to say, I don't know, your nightstand gun. You'd have to reach. And if you reached over, they would shoot you or attack you or something. You roll over your bed, got one under your bed. You got to go over to the left corner of your room. You got one behind the bookcase. Uh, you got one behind the dresser. You got some, you know, there's always, no matter what corner or area of the room that you're, you may be pinned down at, you'll have a gun there. So I think it's a great idea. And if we check out Gun Channel side, we're getting good idea, 100% good idea answers. And then if we check out the YouTube side, we get 100% great idea. So looks like it's 100% great idea. So Bob, why is it a bad idea? The, the, the reason it's a bad idea is because you don't need to. All you need to do is carry your gun with you all the time. It should be on you 24-7. You can get a nice pair of pajamas that will look good with a holster. And... <laughs> oh, my God. So now you're walking around with a pajamas with a holster on. A robe with a shoulder holster. Well, I don't clean. wear pajamas. I'm just saying that for the more modest folks out there. All right. So, in other words, if you live on any kind of amount of acreage, and you've got a back door that leads out to your back acreage and there's giant raptors flying around and then your kids are out i don't know just out of the range of a small arm just out of range of a handgun your kids are out running around and then a giant raptor comes down and is about to grab one of them you're like no i didn't need to stage a rifle or anything because i just carry my handgun around with me seems to me like those kids are You can always have more kids. But you don't want to leave the guns around because you don't want the kids to get hurt. No, I just don't want them touching my guns and getting fingerprints all over them. Yeah, that's my, my main concern. So, uh, Patriot is saying I like to spread them out. Then if anybody breaks in while I'm not home, they won't steal everything in the safe. Oh. Um, okay, yeah, but they could still look around. Nah, if you're going to do the, I'm going to give the criminals stuff so that they don't steal the good stuff game, then number one, that's a dumb game, I think. It's easier and I think more wise strategically, right, to just not have any stuff <laughs> around. So they come in and go, oh, I broke into a poor person's house, and then they leave. Or just like, oh, I broke into a slob's house, and they leave, right? A lot of people just are slobs or whatever, so why would you leave a bunch of good stuff in with your garbage and slop so uh uh what about all these like hiding shelves and tuckable drawers and you know artwork and pictures that hide and uh just keep your stuff around but not necessarily you know sitting on shelves and hanging on hooks i'm definitely i would definitely be interested in that i just you know money um I, oh, I think it's a good please, idea, but I've never actually had to have it. more often and check out a book, How to Hide Anything, or 101 Hidey Holes, or stuff like that. There's there's books that have been around since forever that are how to hollow outdoors, how to make a little space behind a shelf. All they take is an afternoon and a little ingenuity. You don't need any. You, you can buy that other stuff if you want, but you can create hidey places real easy. You can It can be as simple as finding an extra vent somewhere, an extra air vent, and cutting a hole in some drywall putting yeah. a little box behind there and nobody's going to pay attention to an extra vent. They're not going to know it's extra fire extinguisher that covers uh, you know, fire extinguisher, got it out, holds a 38. Nobody's going to try to steal your nine volt battery. Probably. Yeah, that is true. And they make those little like, uh, how a lot of those hideaway things. Yeah, exactly. You know, that kind of stuff. It just takes an afternoon and some thinking and maybe it makes me an interesting video. Put it in a video, though everybody knows where you're hiding it. No, you put it in a video, and then you give that item as a gift to somebody, and make something else for yourself that's private. It's a Bob. 
and people breaking the bombs out. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Wasn't sure which book, but then I remembered the videos. All right, so uh, I think we solved it, right? Good idea, bad idea, it's a good idea. Awesome idea. Bad idea. We only got, I don't think we got any bad ideas except for Bob. Oh, Steadily, I think, is saying no because he only owns rifles. Again, refer to hiding them behind mirrors and in areas and behind places and stuff like that. You know, behind the couch. I've one. I got one that's just laying under the bed. So I mean, yeah, there you go. Or are you saying bad? So he agrees with Bob. All right. At least there's somebody out there thinking. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll move on to the next one, uh, which will be. Let me do gun shop of the day. Get that going. Figure out what's going on with this. Yeah, let's check it out. So it looks like we're going to Illinois today. Now, now that stands for Guns, Ammo, and Training. But originally, back in 1979, according to the website, uh, it was originally named after the owner's initials, which are Greg A. Tropino. So GAT was the owner's initials. However, when I was a kid and we visited this store, well, we always thought it was Guns and Tackle. So uh, originally, this store was in an a old location. In 1979, when he started the shop, it was underneath the strip center. So you'd go to this strip center, you go in some doors, then you go downstairs. And in the basement of the strip center was this cool little gun shop, uh, very much like the gun shop on Terminator, except there was a range there and you could shoot as well. So it was a great little shop, and it got my interest in gun shops from way back then. Uh, then in 1989, they moved to this location. You can see a much bigger location. It used to be a restaurant, and since then they built it up. 2002, they did a construct an expansion and added more construction to it. So now they call it Guns, Ammo, and Training. And you can see it's a massive gun shop, tons of inventory, just a massive amount of variety of the various models and uh, just infinite selection. Uh, the upstairs is most of the firearms. There's knives up there and, of course, some training and stuff. And as we walk around, you get an idea of the scope and the scale of this gun shop. Now, downstairs are the ranges, and there's nothing to the slouch there, they have 24 25 yard ranges, they have 14 50 yard indoor ranges, and 14 indoor 75 yard ranges. So they have a lot of shooting facilities there. Uh, it was a Sunday when we visited. I visited with Dano, one of the co hosts of the Daily Gun Show, for about a year. He lives not too far from here, about an hour or something from here. And uh, while we were there shooting or visiting, there was uh, plenty of people shooting just from all walks of life, all ages, and Everything just a great uh, experience to see so many people from Illinois uh, enjoying uh, time on the range like that. You can see they have lots of ammunition, tons of selection. The staff is ultimately helpful and friendly. I would, uh, I can't recommend this shop enough. Again, this is one of the shops that got my interest in guns uh, from a very young age. So um, I can't encourage enough if you're in the Chicago area, it's not too far off one of the tollways. Uh, check it out, and if you're familiar with GAT guns, please post videos and talk about some stories. I'd be more than interested personally to hear those, but I'm sure it would help out to uh, let people know that there are plenty of gun, pro guns things happening in Illinois. Of course, they have training, and uh, that's a big part of the store now. So hopefully you enjoyed this quick tour of GAT guns. Stay tuned for lots more on the Gun Show Loophole Tour, and as always, thanks for watching. So now is where Dana would talk about it, except he's not in the show anymore. That was a, looks like a really nice shop. Oh, yeah. It's pretty cool. Really big. You ever been there, Jimmy? Jimmy left. No, I haven't. Uh, it, that, you saying something? That, um, where is it at? Up by Dano? I've never been out that way. Not that far. You know where Santa's Village is? Um, no. Oh, all right. Anyway, so uh, that was our gun shop today. Every day we try to feature a shop. It's one of the reasons we do the shop or the show on a daily basis, so we can feature a gun shop every day. Um, trying to get a system down uh, to get the videos posted. If you're interested in helping with video editing and video production, if you're uh, interested in doing that kind of stuff or you just want to help out the channel, 
uh, as long as you're familiar with the video editing software, we're not able to walk somebody through how to use the software. But if you're fluent in the software and you're interested in helping out and trying to uh, help us get better video quality out there, uh, then contact Jimmy and we'll uh, bring you on board and set you up with some uh, software, some what content, some videos and pictures and see what you can do. And ho hopefully we'd get a couple of editors on board to help get this stuff up. We visited 60 shops. As you can see, some of the stuff like the, the castle, lots and lots of videos, like 40 minutes with just the one guy there. So lots of ways to chop that up into interesting little uh, couple of minute videos, which is our style. And if you're interested in helping out with that, uh, contact Jimmy. What Jimmy at gunwebsites.com. Absolutely, yep. All right, so that'll take us into the next segment. What do you want to do next? Movie of the day. Movie of the day. All right, so I guess we're on a uh, Vietnam kick. I think we did Platoon yesterday. Today, we're, for our gun-related movie, is uh, Full Metal Jacket. I think another one that's uh, epic, classic. Iconic, yeah. Yeah, iconic, yeah, for sure. Definitely giving it two thumbs up. I don't like to do it two days in a row, but yeah, it's called for. Yeah, I got to agree with it. This is like two movies, and they're both awesome. Yep, I got to agree with uh, Jimmy there and go two thumbs up for sure. But it is like two different movies almost. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's why I would give both of them two thumbs up. you got to check both of them out. Yeah. For sure. Now, that's the one that's got the, uh, this is my gun. That's got gunny in it, right? Yeah, this is my rifle. This is my gun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Classic. Am I breaking up? No, you're not. All right, because now all of a sudden my web page ain't working. My internet's getting bad. This net neutrality is horrible. I don't know. I should have voted for internet communism. <laughs> Maybe it's just the history page is broke. So I guess we'll just say screw history day. It wasn't showing up. Uh, is that all we're saying about the movie? That it was awesome. Yeah, I loved it. I mean, there's there's uh, some of my favorite parts are kind of not repeatable, I guess. <laughs> I'm trying to watch our language or whatever. <laughs> but definitely a good movie. Yeah, Patriot's got some fair stuff about it. It's a good one, and it's iconic and everything, but it's not the best movie ever or nothing. But uh, I'm still going to give it to. Yeah, I wouldn't call it the best, definitely not, but it's up there. Yeah, I do like Platoon better. Probably because Platoon's about Army, right? Yeah, that's probably why. Yeah, it's pretty anti, so I'll agree with Patriot. All right, so with that, I guess we can move on to the next segment, keep the show moving. Um, let's take a break and talk about the Patreon for a second. Let's talk about stuff that I don't have staged up here. So now that it's hopefully coming up on the screen. Uh, we're coming up on the end of the month. I think we talked about this already uh, the other day. But at the end of the month, the uh, stuff locks in. So if you're interested in getting on board with the gun show and gun shop stuff, I'm heading up to the SAR show this weekend with Jimmy and Angry and uh, Heavy and Martin Ivy from Texas. Looks like we're up to 18 people over there. Our goal is to get 150 people. That'll get us on the road full time. All the bills paid, servers, you know, paid for, all that kind of stuff, and uh, gas in the van. And best part, spending 4000 bucks a month. So spending $1,000 a week as we drive around. So uh, that's a lofty goal, but I think we can do it. We're in our second month, and we're up to 20 people. It's the Christmas month, so anybody that locks in uh, will get you know cool, something cool before Christmas because the gun show is this weekend. So 
uh, more than likely fill up at the gun show and send the packages out you know sooner in the month than later uh, you don't have any obligation to stay on more than a month although the month after that we're going to be in vegas and uh, go into the antique gun show and knife show bob will be there jimmy will be there all the other gun channels guys and gun websites guys will be there and uh we'll be combing that show for all kinds of cool stuff so if you got a hundred bucks and you'd like to get fifty dollars of that back in stuff and you know that that fifty dollars got left at a gun show a museum or a gun shop along the way then uh jump on over and if you can't jump into one of the other ones uh, after the show today i'll be or maybe during the show i'll be uh picking some random people maybe i should do that during the show and we're going to send out some stuff that i got at gun shows uh to people that are not doing the 50 dollars one just to say thanks to everybody because this is 86 bucks coming in right here pretty well let's say 80 bucks it's 85 people dropping a dollar that's 80 bucks that's like two tanks of gas right so that's pretty awesome so we're going to throw some random stuff out to those people and as soon as the stickers get here from flippy we'll show some pictures of those and uh those will be sent out we got new stickers coming for next month which i think people will dig and uh Hopefully it's worth your while. You're getting a little bit of something back in the mail and you're supporting our projects. The daily gun show that we're doing right now, the gun show loophole tour, which gets us out on the road and getting people active and hopefully inspiring people to create some other content, uh, as well as the Gun Channels University. We're going to be kicking that into gear here. Um, I'm all stoked after learning some stuff that Clover has been dropping on it and some uh, knowledge Clover's been dropping. Uh, as well as gun channels, right? And Every Second Matters, and eventually the AK-47 podcast as well. So, um, you know, that's right now on the back burner, but once I can not spend my time trying to, you know, make money every single day, I can start making content every single day, and we can start moving uh, forward with some of these projects again. So, again, thanks everybody who's participating in it. It looks like we got a couple more people overnight. And uh, I'll be posting another video to remind people about it over on YouTube. So that'll let a couple hundred thousand people know about it. But uh, those couple hundred thousand people ain't listening every day. Look at how many video, uh, views we get on our videos. There's hundreds of people that watch our stuff over there. So what really matters is the people that are listening right now. The people that really listen to what we're doing, are, that really care about the projects we're doing. Uh, let other people know about this. Uh, if you know somebody who's doing one of those you know packages of the month or something that are you know if they're, they're just into uh, gun shops or gun shows or something please let them know about this and see if they'll jump in for a month or two uh the more people we get uh in on it the more money we have to spend at the show but that also means the cooler stuff we should be able to find right so um thanks for being part of that and we'll go back to regularly scheduling pro regularly scheduled programming here so what do you want to hit next Um, I got the Instagram thing pulled up. Yeah, let's do the Instagram showdown. All right. Get the screen share rolling over here. Try not to give away too many secrets. And there's a daily gun show. So what did we right. have this week? Um, hold on. Let's look over here. We had twelve ninety five last week, and this week was I don't know why everything's so huge thirteen oh five. We had ten, no twenty come in. Five, no, we had ten come in. So ten posts. Be simple. Should be fast. It uh, should be a quick one this time. Um, and a couple of them look like repo reposts. So you um, less than ten and. So Ours. Oh my goodness. You might as well just shut the show down. <laughs> <laughs> We're done here. Um, so that one is Moon. Let me, I think I got to zoom out here. My mouse just broke on me earlier today. What? Well, it didn't break, but batteries. Batteries, batteries. I told you, you got to keep it out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Not what it's for. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but this one is moved. <laughs> we can see the slide. I saw the, the rear sight and some of the slide on that one. So oh, yeah. try holding down the control key and wiggling the scroll wheel on the mouse. No, I need batteries. Oh, you don't have batteries in your mouse? Damn. It's a Glock. 
Look at this guy. <laughs> they didn't have these problems in early watch. Early watch, it's all like, oh, here's a picture. Bam. Here's another demo. Bam. Here's some graphics. Boom. Just I'm a little biased. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Well, I tell you what, why don't we? Are you about to go or do we got a minute and I'll I give you a minute and we'll do something yeah, else? Go ahead. All right, so I'm going to show you something neat that uh, Ghost showed us the other day and I just finally got around to acting on it. So I'm going to go into the YouTubes, right? And I'm going to go, actually, I don't need to do it that way. I'm going to go into the YouTubes the front way, like if I just went to my channel and. We're going to go find a video. So I'm going to go to my videos here. I hope that clicked on it. Yeah. And uh, see, my internets are super slow. And I'm going to sort it by the most popular. So that'll give me a really you know, the biggest videos first. And I'm going to try to find one here that I haven't worked with yet. So this one, Silencer Co. Osprey. It's got 840,000 views on it. So we can go in here, and I've got this thing called IQ going. So Vid IQ is this app Let's that's take a look running. At the Silencer Co. Osprey. This is the and it gives us all this cool information about the video, right? So now I'm going to go down and I'm going to edit the video. And some of the cool data it's going to give me are like a ranking, like a you know a numerical value of like its score or whatever. And as that shows up here, so my score is 35 out of 100, right? So there's things I can do to make this better. If we look at it, uh, just like Clover would say, the, the title and the description are exactly the same. I'm only using 32 characters out of 5,000, and I'm using very few tags here. So go ahead and do what you're doing. And while we're going with the show, I'm going to basically put a couple of paragraphs in here to make this useful. I'm going to tweak my title to make it useful. I'm going to add some tags and stuff, and we'll see if we can get this score of 35 a little bit higher. So now I'll quit screen sharing, and we can go on. Does that give you enough time to go on to whatever, get your mouse or whatever going? More than enough, more than enough. Thank you. Um, cool. So here we go with the hashtag showdown one more time. Damn it. All right. If I remember these guys. I, oh, wait. No, I don't remember that guy. I don't remember that guy either. Remember that. I don't remember that. All right, so we I think we're right here. Okay. Um yeah, five days ago. So this was Chris Glock thirty five. Hmm. Okay. Um next one we got Moon here. Oh yeah, with a little forty three. I like those little things. I didn't like the forty two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got Chris. That's nice. Little extended clip, Kimber. Extendo. Uh, go to gear. What do we got here? Sig P two two six. Oh, that's cool. Oh yeah, I like the black patch. CZ, that's kind of like a bastard child of a Browning high power. <laughs> well, this CZ is like a bastard child of a Glock. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's that, a PT-22? Yep, PT-22. Horus, one of Matt's favorite guns. We got a repost by Hadi. Oh, yeah. That was Ghost's original one. Now that's nice. Fat Stripes 13. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I don't think I sold them like that a while back. They didn't have that cool of a holster, though. That's cool putting it in a box. Like that. Yeah, I like that. I wonder if that's one of the hiding spots around his house that he had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got uh, Fat Stripes again. Fat Stripes 13. Old school oh, and sweet. Old school Um. Oh, that that last one must have been a repost. Oh no, this is a different one. 
This is a P938. Mm. That's a C. That other one was a Taurus. Uh, two hottie repost here from Steadily. It looks like, yep, Steadily. Oh, yeah. AK on a telephone post. <laughs> Got another repost from Steady here. I like that patch. Got to find it. Yeah. That's Marco's patch. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. You did that with that t-shirt company where Yankee's on? Oh, oh, see, I thought Mac did that. I didn't know Marco did that. That's cool. Well, I guess they did it together, but it's Marco's idea. I don't know how Mac got involved with it or what. Oh. I think I just seen Mac wearing a t-shirt or wearing a patch or something like that. Now then we got some uh, Evan Williams there. Oh, and there's a gun in the picture. Yeah, I actually like uh, the holster. That looks cool. That's uh, like a look-alike carbon fiber, I think. Yeah. Uh, we got, oh, Mr. Wright. All colted out. Oh, yeah. That's an old one. Yeah, this, so we have, that was the last one right there. Angry. So we started here. I'm going to go with Moon's uh, skull patches. Which happened to be available. yes, which happened to be available at the gear website store. Which there's a link in every video description. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's one for Moon here. I'm going for the Colt Woodsman with the holster. Yep. Hold on, passed it. There you go. Yeah. Bob's going with that one. Yeah, I like that. I like those old Colt Woodsman. Unique little 22s. Um, is this one from this time? Oh, no, we did that last time. I would have picked this one. <coughs> um, all right, I think I'm going to go with the old school, new school Smith & Wesson here. Oh, yeah. So we got one for the Smith and Wesson, one for the Colt with the holster, and one for the uh, CZP pen with the patches. Who will win? Let's see. We got a couple of votes for the CZ. Okay, why won't it let me uh, erase comments on the YouTube side? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like the CZ got it, then. Yeah. Moon, congratulations. The uh, hashtag showdown hotshot for today. Yeah. So, congrats. Uh, speaking of hot shots and showdowns and uh, shoot em outs and. What? Yes. Yeah, that just happened. Um, so, today we will be doing another uh, visual quiz. Whip out them. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Those damn ads. Um, and get ready for the Daily Tax Clock Quiz. Wait, maybe I should stop screen sharing because I don't know if I have it set or not. Let's get rid of this. Get rid of this. And let's open up this. What is that? I don't think I put the answer in the show notes. The one in his left hand? Um, no. The one in his right hand. Hold on, I'm putting the answer in there right now. There you go. Oh, 
Looks like Angry already got it, but I'm going to try to see if anyone else got it. Nope. So Angry got it. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, Pondery got it. Pondery got it. Now, let's, let me go double check and make sure. Yep, Pondery got it. Punt gun. Congratulations, Pondery. Beating Angry by a second. Yeah, darn good thing uh, we rechecked that. You tried to give it to Angry. Well, I mean, his check did clear, but Pondery was faster this time, so. Yeah. We'll get something anyway, Angry. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Pottery, that makes you the tactical hot shot of the day. Congratulations. All right. Uh, what are we doing? How's it going over there with that, G Webs? Or Got a couple more things I'll do here. All right. Um, so we got right. we got the quiz, but the showdown is that all we got? I think we need a gun of the day. Yeah. Well, we do have a gun of the day, and the gun of the day today is. A Chinese Type 26 light machine gun. And 762 by 39. Another upside down magazine. No, no, no. No, no. See, this is, <laughs> this is the right way to build one. Um, anyway, it's it's basically a copy of the Czechoslovakian ZB VZ 26 light machine gun. Uh, other than they changed the caliber to 762 by 39. The Chinese did use the uh, the Czech Z ZB and eight millimeter Mauser, which <laughs> a hell of a lot more punchy round than that 762, but still um, pretty interesting. Just imagine how much fun this thing would be to take to uh, the gun range, you know? People would be like, oh, it's a Bren gun. No. <laughs> uh, but yeah, a very cool gun. I think I'd definitely love to own one, but they're a little pricey. Yeah, but yeah, I would imagine. Very, very cool gun. So that's our gun of the day. Does that not look neat though? Look at that magazine looks so much neater and tidier when it's in a seven six two by three nine rather than three oh three or eight millimeter. Oh yeah, yeah. Still don't like it right in my sight path, but you know. Well, that's why they set the sights off to the side. <laughs> <laughs> Works. <laughs> they did that with the boys' rifle, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just think it's a really, it, it's really neat the way the Chinese would take almost any gun that they imported and go, we can make this. <laughs> and we'll do it different. We'll do it in the caliber we have lots of. I'm wondering, they, they didn't have a lot of pick this first Top line is only pictures that there was. Uh, not very many pictures of it. No, they're quite rare. Oh, really? Okay. That makes sense. I've seen, I think one I've seen up here in Canada. So, I don't know. It does kind of look like an 8K magazine, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It even has that re that rear release. Re well, I guess yeah. it has a, a Well, they, they may very well have. I mean, yeah, that is smart thing. I've done videos on Oh, have you? Yeah, uh, the guy here in Tucson has a bunch of them that are uh, from Warlords. Like Bob said, they would take an old gun and just convert it to what they already had mags and ammo for. Huh. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Am I still screen sharing? Let me see if I've got them over here. What would that be called? Those. I think he has a Mac. Um, This one is the Chinese 20 Type 26. Yeah. Now, was it a Maxim Type 26, you said? Yeah. That wasn't a 26. It was more like a 
18, 19 or something. But anyway, yeah, I got some videos on somewhere in there. So what yeah. I've been doing is uh, since am I still locked on then? Are we done with the Bob's? Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Unscreen shared. Okay. Now I'm back to screen sharing, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. All right. So let me go about and save it again. So I have yet to, I can do a thumbnail with this software. So again, I'm using this thing called, what is it called? Vid IQ or something. So what was I before? 34 or 43 or something like that? 34, yeah. 34, it was yellow before. So now by going in and adding substantially more uh, text. So I basically just put in some text talking about what I was looking at in the video and then use some of that text, like saying, um, there's another one. I still have a couple more words in there. I could say silencer, osprey, suppressor made in Salt Lake City. I don't think I have that one. It's a huge keyword, but I'll just drop that in there, and it's that easy. So now I've got 454 keywords or tags in there. Um, I added a bunch of the guys who are watching the chat right now in here as collaborators since this video has uh, 842,000 views, and it gets... I guess we'll find out here in a minute. It gets a bunch of views every day. So thanks to the people that are watching now. I posted a bunch of your channels in here as collaborators. And then, of course, CloverTac for telling us about these tips. But yeah, that brought that um, just that little bit of effort going in. And I added a close look to the title. I'll probably add a little bit more to the title here um, at a quiet 9 millimeter. How about that? Quiet 9 millimeter. And then I can take quiet 9 millimeter. And throw that down here as another tag and see if that changed anything. No, I guess it didn't. But anyway, um, just a couple of changes. I added a card. So there's a little thing that'll roll. It'll show up here on the screen and say, go over to Gear Website Store. And uh, by adding that card, it gave it a little bit of extra rank number here. So anyway, thanks to uh, Clover for showing that to us. Uh, I finally installed the uh, plugin. It's just a plugin to the Chrome browser. It didn't cost anything and then uh, started using it to evaluate the videos. So we'll be doing that on the gun show, on the daily gun show videos. And I'll be doing it to more of my YouTube videos. So thanks again. And if you're interested in that, um, Clover has a great video in his uh, playlist that's a bunch of tutorials on how to use YouTube better. So out of curiosity, is that score being raised up? Is that gonna get the videos more views or? Yeah. Oh, let me screen capture again. So without turning it into a Monday show, we'll, we'll yeah. have um, Clover on here to talk more about it. But basically, you uh, are trying to make your video as attractive as possible to the search engines and to the human beings, right? So my my uh, thumbnail isn't that great. So real, real quick, not even answer your question. Let me go make a thumbnail since that's bugging me. It's like the last thing I need to do, right? So there's kind of a cool shot from the video right there. Somewhere right there. So I'll back it up just a hair and get that. I'll just pause it wherever I like that shot right there. And then I'll go next. And then right in this little thing, I can say uh, I at 9 millimeter. I can make that really big text. I'll make it yellow, I guess. And then I'll give it a, an outline. We'll add that text. I'll change the font on it to a fatter font. We'll put that down here, and then what was it? Is it an osprey? Uh, say like that, osprey on a Glock 19. This maybe is a little bit boring, but I wanted to put that in there because it would drive me nuts. So, boom. Oops, put that over there. Go to that one. Delete it. Okay. So now it's got a the thumbnail that's a little nicer. So that's the first thing for a human being, right? They're going to see that. They're going to be able to read what it says there. It's an Osprey on a Glock 19, quiet 9 millimeter, And whenever it's, it's unsaving. Okay, so now we know that that's accomplished, but when it comes to the brains, the Skynet, how does it know? So it's going to use things like keywords to determine if this is legitimate or not. So in my description, I used lots of keywords, and then I 
kind of keyed them in. I, I uh, focused in on the keywords down below in this tag area. So there's certain keywords like Silencer Co., which if you use this plugin, it can take you over here and show you that there's quite a few people that search for it, but there's also quite a bit of competition for it. What you're ideally looking for is something that gets searched for a lot and has absolutely no competition. That doesn't really exist too often, so this is telling us that you know it's an okay keyword, but since there's so much competition, there's very little chance that this is going to rank. Something like Silencer Co. Osprey, on the other hand, is a keyword that doesn't get searched very often, and there's not that much competition for it, I guess. So for whatever reason, I show up, this video shows up number six when someone searches for that now. And uh, I have a close look at the Silencer Co. Osprey. It's the number one search. Probably nobody searches for that. But if they did, it would be the number one search. And you're trying to get ranked searches, I guess. You're trying to get um, into keywords that are searchable occasionally that uh, you're ranking high in. And that's one of the strategies out there. So what does that mean for you is when someone searches for one of these keywords, like a suppressor on a Glock 19, uh, which doesn't happen very often, it says, when they do look for it, I'm going to rank number nine. So hopefully, you know, that'll put me <clears throat> close enough to the top of a suggested videos list that uh, when someone searches for that, they'll find the first guy and the second guy and the third guy on the first page. And then if they dig in at all, hopefully they'll find these videos. So it's supposedly just a way to tidy your stuff up to make sure that it's working efficiently with the system so that you're not fighting the system and that you're, that you're not invisible to the system. Uh, doing some other things like the cards, I think, are part of the logarithm, the parts that YouTube uses to determine if you're participating in the system. I imagine a little bit of it is to see that you're aware of everything, you know, like you're not just accidentally making videos that are awesome, but you're actually putting the work in, you're, you're seeing what the pieces they want accomplished to make a video work well, and they probably give you a little bit of reward for that. So there's some advantage if you're not a big video with 800,000 views, there's probably some advantage to going through this extra effort just to make sure you're complying with their mm, tools, right, so that you fit into place and you're not going against the grain at all and that you can basically float as fast as or as far as possible on whatever current you end up catching. All right, well, anyway, so like I said, I didn't want to turn this into a Monday show, but that was super cool. I've been playing with this all night. Uh, I've got the chance to finally watch Clover's whole video on the, on the two plugins and... Uh, can't thank them enough. It's really neat stuff. I highly encourage you if you're making content, take the extra effort to learn how to do this. These are tools, right? You know how to use a hammer. You don't you know some people will be happy to like put up a wall with, you know, put up their framing, put up some drywall, walk away. But a lot of other people are going to either be required by their wife or just, you know, they don't like the look of an unfinished wall. They're going to put mud on there and they're going to paint it, right? So it's just how much of these tools do you actually want to use? Do you want to be sloppy with your tools and just be satisfied? I know how to clump, be clumsy on the internet. I know how to live, you know, to work in an unfinished internet. Or do you want to put some paint and drywall on there? Uh, I know it's not the best analogy, but, you know, do you want to go that extra effort and finish the job? And if you're going to take all the time to put content up there, I've been doing it, trust me, I've been doing it a long time, um, putting it up there sloppy. It doesn't really take that much effort to put it up there, even if it's sloppy visually. Uh, I can put it up there in a way with the content, with the words, the tags, and whatnot that the system wants, and it's just playing the game. So um, anyway, I think it's uh, kind of cool. So yeah. Definitely. You know, that is really neat, the way you can actually change um, how it's viewed, I guess. Yeah. So we can go into it in other shows. We'll take a look at the, I guess I screen captured there. Uh, if we go to the other side. Uh, this is when you're building it or whatever. When you go out and look at it from the public, I better save it again. So we went from 34 or whatever to 66, and this is on the back end like of the parts that we can manipulate. But if you go out on the other side and look at it from the outside, uh, the, the same application, the same plugin is going to give us all kinds of insight. It looks like this thing has had 842,000 views. It gets uh, 0.4 views per hour. I've got some videos that are getting viewed like 24 times an hour still. It's crazy. Um, but, you know, it's got these different numbers. And, I don't know, you can use it to uh, track the progress. Like I say, we'll get uh, Clover on here and have a closer look at what all these different things do. But it, you can go to other people's videos and see how they're doing. Oh, it's really, really neat. 
Yeah, that's real informative. I mean, not only for people that are creating content, but for people that are watching the content and kind of interested in the whole behind the scenes stuff. Uh, that, yeah, it's, it's very informative. Yeah, I think it's going to make a good show. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, that's our show. We'll be back here tomorrow at uh, for episode 454. Hmm. 454. So Bob will probably have us looking at, I don't know, an English revolver or something. Some kind of 22. Gunfire, <laughs> <laughs> something from the Middle, Middle East. Yep, uh, that's the plan. <laughs> we'll also be talking about CCW. We'll be talking about the gun stuff. Alternative hides and staging. Interesting. I wonder if that was intentional to lock in with today. And then training. Why is tactical feared? So uh, why are people so abhorrent to putting tactical in training? Like people freak out when there's the word tactical in training. So we're going to talk about that as well as the gun the shop of the day, the gun of the day, movie of the day, and all that other stuff that we hit. If you have suggestions for the show, we're always here listening to them at dailygunshow at gmail.com. And I don't know, is there anything else today? Um, just other than what's on tonight. Oh, yeah. Well, I know after us, uh, Pondery, your parents are probably going to put up a lobby. And uh, after that, prime time today, I think, is Clover, the next generation at 8 Eastern. That's when he does his, uh, his youth shooting chats and stuff like that and um matt is having today's wednesday so it's politics guns and politics chat i think that's it All let's right. talk again about uh various things that are happening today hr 38 is being voted on today if it hasn't already been voted on it's a great time to get exercise your skills on the internet and to make your voice known you know Clear your throat once in a while, so when you need to make, you know, when you need to talk, you can, and when you need to scream, you're able. So uh, HR 38 is National Carry Reciprocity. It's uh, not perfect, but it is being voted on today. Uh, so there's resources at Gun Owners of America, as well as Firearms Policy Coalition, that will have the um, little links. You click on it, it takes you to their their forms, and then that will automatically send the emails out on Gun Owners of America. You can change the text. I I posted a video earlier. I, I limit my text. I don't, you know, theirs is very verbose. I drop it down to, I oppose this one. I, I support this one. Please do the same. Please do the same. And then send that to both senators and, and reps in the House. Uh, the uh, gun uh, policy, um, or firearms policy, their form is not editable, but their form includes some edits to the bill so they their uh, wording is more to the effect of we're in support of this bill with these edits and their edits are clarifications for example they don't have washington dc defined in hr 38 uh, i think there's a clarification on the definition of a handgun and a couple other just little things that could potentially be problems if they aren't addressed in the wording of it so um, both of them are valid. Both of them are good resources. Of course, keep exercise your phone uh, skills and make a phone call or two. Everything's weighted differently. And uh, those are happening today. I think something else that I'm not going to bother talking about too much is because there's this call to action that's actually timely today. But uh, we could be talking, and we'll probably be talking tomorrow, about gun confiscation in Hawaii. If you had a medical marijuana card in any state, I think is how it's read. So you could go to California and get a medical marijuana card and then come back to Hawaii and you'd have 30 days to turn in your firearms. They've sent out an email, a letter. Uh, they posted it everywhere yesterday that if you have a medical marijuana card, you need to you have 30 days to turn in your firearms. So uh, they talk about slippery slope. They talk about we'll never confiscate. We're not asking for all your guns unless you live in Hawaii and you're maybe a veteran and you're using medical marijuana to deal with PTSD or a physical chronic ailment uh, that's something that you know prescription drugs can't help with uh, if you are doing the medical marijuana because of its status the federal level you now have to surrender your firearms if you're goofed out on pills and and booze to wash the pills down keep your guns makes no sense uh, it's something that we saw also some stuff get turned down at the uh, 
Supreme Court yesterday, it looks like we're going to have the next, potentially the next um, issue to head up to the Supreme Court from the Ninth Circuit, right? With something's going to come of that, I suspect. Hopefully somebody's going to not comply with, or at least refuse to comply with the, whatever they're calling confiscation there. Uh, what do they call it? Vandatory, van, voluntary, um, what do they call it? Voluntary. Disarmament? <laughs> no, whatever they call it. Surrender, voluntary surrender of your firearms, I think. Anyway, those are super important things that are going on today. Let's have some fun with the entertaining shows and whatnot, but then remember that the reason we have these shows going is to keep the pipeline open. The reason we have a our mouth go into your ear is so that we can remind people about things like this. And this is literally being voted on today. There's 21 people watching. I hope that 21 people will send an email after this. Uh, we'll make sure that the links are in the comments and uh, we'll drop them in the uh, show description as well. All right, I don't know if we got into what shows are on tonight or not, but sorry, I cut us off there. Yeah, no, I think no worries. We already uh, wrapped that up. Yep. So I think we're ready to just shut this puppy down. So we'll end it with a quote, as we always do. Um, before that, though, I'd like to remind everybody, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you can find it in your pocketbook, support us on Patreon. Uh, you guys are the ones who keep this show going. Um, so help us out. And uh, on that note, our quote today is by the Dalai Lama. Well, how could that be anything to do with guns? It's the Dalai Lama. But he uh, actually does agree with us. If, if someone has a gun and is trying to kill you, it would be reasonable to shoot back with your own gun. So that's coming from the Dalai Lama, and uh, those are pretty strong words from a great religious leader, I guess, from that part of the country. So thanks, everybody, for watching and listening. We'll see you all tomorrow. The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching GunWebsites.com.